my people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic damn day. Welcome back to the channel. Of course, it is Throwback Thursday, and in the, the, the spirit of the festive season, we're going to be doing the Christmas tree formation, and more specifically, the 06-07 AC Milan side under Carlo Ancelotti, of course. The 4-3-2-1 system, of course, also known as the Christmas tree system. So, we'll be doing that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you can, hit that like button down below, subscribe if you are new, and top on straight into the video. So with this side going forward, it is a 4-3-2-1 system. I have made subtle changes to it, of course. Normally, you have three central midfielders. I've dropped the one into that DM position, as well as you'll notice that we don't play with fullbacks. We play with wingbacks in this system. So, of course, you've got a right and a left wingback. So it's one goalkeeper, two centre-backs, two wingbacks, one DM, two central midfielders, two centre-forwards, and then, of course, one striker. Now with the tactical vision going forward, I think custom best suits what Carl Ancelotti and the side were looking to do. I don't think that anything of what they were doing fits into any of the above categories of, you know, having a, a game pressing system or a tiki tucker system. It was a very mixed and rigid and structured as well as pragmatic approach to games and how they would look to try and play out and, and try and dominate the opposition. So that's why custom best suits the side. For the defensive style, however, Pressing off to possession loss, of course, you do have Perlo in there as well as Kaká, who weren't the best at the defensive side of things, but you did have Lux Ambrosini, Seydorf, of course, you had Gattuso, very strong, hard-working defensive players that can win that ball back very aggressively, and obviously, with this side going forward, they would look to try and press the life out of the opposition when out of possession of the ball, and try and gain it back into their own possession to try and get the playmakers like Kaká and Perlo and so on on the ball, ready to try and dictate the pace of play. As for the team width on the defensive side of things, I've gone with a very, very narrow, structurally sound, super defensive unit, and that's going to be set to 10, of course. Of course, you had the likes of Maldini and, and so on in the back line, making sure that they were dictating that the opposition didn't and couldn't play through them more times, not making it very hard for them to try and fit plays in between the lines, trying to play through those lines, and it was very, very hard to try and break down that AC Milan side. Now, moving on to the depth, of course, I've set it to 65. This does help, of course, with the likes of Perlo, he wasn't well known for his defensive abilities, and more or less this would try and protect him, trying to make sure that the opposition couldn't exploit you with a ball over the top with the quick counter-attacks that they would try and launch against this 8th Milan side. Of course, at the time, Maldini was, what, close to 40, or if not in his 40s? Somewhere around there, late 30s, early 40s potentially. But of course, he didn't have the, the, the world-beating pace that he once had when he was a fullback. So, you are also... And, to be honest, Ancelotti was trying to protect that, that's more or less why they did set up with a mid-block system. Now moving on to the offense, of course, with the builder play going forward, it is such a slow builder play, and this does help with getting the likes of Perillo, Maldini, Nesta, and so on, all on the ball, having them show for it with the goalkeeper restarts, and then being able to progress and play out from the back very effectively. Now for the chance creation, I've gone with a possession-based system, now of course the system is very effective when you do have the ball, so try your damnedest to make sure that you are looking after the ball, make sure you're not turning the ball over as much and playing into the hands of what the opposition would essentially want you to, to have your playmakers and your creators ineffective in the game. Like I said, Carr as well as Perlo were very effective when in possession of the ball. The likes of Kaká linking up nicely with Perlo, dropping deep, getting on the ball, driving at the opposition. That's more or less what you want. So make sure that you are rotating it quite nicely. Make sure you're not trying to do anything outlandish, trying to play risky passes. You don't have a Bruno Fernandes in your team. You've got Perlo, and you've got probably the greatest number 10 of all time, or one of the greatest number 10s of all time in the likes of Kaká. So make sure you are looking off the ball and making sure that you are rotating it, creating those passing triangles, creating havoc for the opposition with the consistent interchanging places, players moving in and around the opposition's half. As for the whip, I've set it to 30 now, of course, as I said earlier, it is a very compact and narrow system down the middle, um, and of course, you do want to try and open up as much space for the likes of Cafu as well as your left back, who is Jan Kolovsky, of course, a very effective man. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It took me a little while to just, you know, enunciate it, pronounce it, and then say it to you guys. But anyways, so you do want to try and generate as much space and pace down those flanks as possible for your fullbacks to be very involved um, in the attacking out there. Of course, having them whip and crosses, supply your forwards with cutbacks, and also just be a bit of a thorn in the opposition side, helping pin back the opposition fullbacks, or if not wingers, in their own half in certain moments. As for players in the box, I have set it to six. Now, of course, more or less you want the likes of 
Seidorf as well as Inzaghi in the box attacking, as well as sometimes the likes of Kaká or maybe even Ambrosini in certain moments attacking that ball in that final third. As for the corners and free kicks, as for always, I have set it to four. Now starting off at the back with your goalkeeper, of course, Dida. He's here to come for crosses, of course, being very good at claiming those aerial balls, whipped into the box if the likes of Maldini and Nessa didn't get onto it themselves. But more so, you do want a very proactive and reactive goalkeeper in that phase of play. Finally, with the saving outside of the box, this was, you know, kind of before the sweeper keeper revolution happened. So you don't really want him doing too much, making sure he is staying on his line, making those saves, being very aggressive with doing so. Obviously, having the ability to play from the back is essential, playing it into Pirlo or Maldini and so on, and then having them progress the ball forward. But you don't really want your keep your your keeper doing too much. You you're quite happy to have a very traditional type goalkeeper. Now moving on into your back line, of course, you've got Tamori and Kiara taking up the likes and the roles of Nesta and Maldini. Now you'll see here that they basically have their, their base set of instructions, except for Nesta, you want him to be a bit more aggressive and this does help, you know, with the likes that Pirlo is not the best defensive midfielder out there. So you can have one of your center backs and outline with Nesta to be a bit more aggressive and imposing on the opposition when required. Out to your fullbacks now, we've got the likes of Cafu as well as um, Jan Kalofsky um, doing their, their roles, of course, being the bombing on attacking fullbacks, providing a lot of the width down each flank. So both of them will be more or less set to the same set of instructions. It's a very limited fullback role that you do have in EAFC, so there's not much that we can do to try and detour or alternate or, you know, change with the, the attacking fullback. So we'll start off with Cafu. He's set to join the attack, of course, you want him to do that, as well as overlap, creating that space down the left or the right hand channel. And then finally, having the ability to step up, be a bit more aggressive, imposing on the opposition's back line or their forwards that are being thrown forward, um, as well as, like I said earlier, having the ability to pin the opposition in their own half at times. That's more or less what you're trying to get out of your fullbacks. As you can see here for the likes of Hernandez slash Jan Kolofsky, he is here to join the attack as well as overlap and then step up just like your right hand side. Now moving on into your midfield, we'll start off with Perlo slash Ben Atzer. He is set to have a basic defensive support, so a balanced defense, so the defensive behavior won't be too aggressive, he won't be looking to be a bit more zonal, trying to cut out and stifle play. He's just going to try and stick to his position, and if he can, he will try and read the game. Of course, Perlo was very good at doing so, getting in the way of the opposition, trying to break up as much play as possible, but he wasn't well known for that, which is why a balanced defensive support does help. As for the attacking support, however, also set to balance, he was quite effective at getting forward, picking up the ball deep and then getting it forward into the front line or potentially driving with it and then linking up play more effectively. For the interceptions, of course, this goes hand in hand with his defensive outlets. I've gone with a conservative instead of interceptions. You don't want him chasing the ball around and doing too much with it. And then finally, for the positioning freedom, set to being the deep line playmaker, of course, he is like the archetypal deep line playmaker that everybody thinks of with the modern day football. So. Um, having him drop between the defenders, collect the ball and progress it forward, that's more or less what you're looking for. And then finally, for the defensive positioning, it is set to cover the center. Now, onto the left-hand side with your left-handed side of midfield, of course, Ambrosini. He is set to having a, an attacking support set to balance, so he can look to get forward, but you also want him to have a bit more of a box-to-box -box type role. So, if needed and required, he can choose to stay back and help protect Perlo and try and cover for the, that defensive area. As for the support on crosses, it's said to get into the box. Like I said earlier, you want three players in there. But if the likes of Kaká slash Liao in this situation doesn't, you'll have the likes of Ambrosini making that run into the attacking third. Now onto the interceptions, both the likes of Ambrosini as well as Gattuso are set to aggressive. This does help generate and recreate their aggressive mentality and outlook to the opponents, as well as having that effortless work rate that you will be trying to recreate in the game. Then finally, moving on to the defensive positioning, it is set to cover the wing, drifting out, helping cover the likes of your fullbacks. If they have gone too far forward, you can always look to try and rely on your, your wider central midfielders to try and cover that space. And then for the positioning freedom for Ambrosini, it is set to free room. You want them to be able to pop up in those little half spaces, pull players out of position, open up a bit more space for Perlo or Kaká to try and drop into or move into, I should say. And always make sure that he is making himself available for that extra pass. Onto the likes of Gattuso now on the right hand side, he is set to stay back. Now often he would drop deep, link up a bit more with the likes of Nesta or Maldini and try and start the attack with those short interchanging passes. Um, and more or less when he does drop off, he does take up, up a bit more of a defensive layer to himself. 
and it does help protect Perlo in certain moments. So more or less for the attacking supports, stay back while attacking does help, it does cover for the likes of Perlo as well. The support on crosses, I've set it to balance, so he can have the option of breaking into the box, attacking the ball, the cutback, the cross, whatever it is, but at the same time, he will look to try and stay on the edge of the area, try and rotate the ball, work into those better areas, and create a better opportunity for his side. As for the interceptions, just like with Ambrosini, it is set to aggressive interceptions. And then finally, the defensive positioning, again, just like Ambrosini, is set to cover the wing, helping cover the right-hand side if Cafu has gone too far forward. But what will change is the stick to position. He was a very rigid and structured man, making sure that he is sticking to that right-hand side, looking to try and hold down the fort on that right-hand channel. Now into your two center forwards, we've got the likes of Seydorf, who is obviously being replaced by Jaquazi, as well as Kakar, who is being replaced by Raphael Leao. So we'll start off with Seydorf. Now, for the support runs, I've gone with a balanced approach, so he can look to sometimes drift wide, help out in those wider channels if required, but mainly they were told to but stay a bit more central, link up a bit more with Inzaghi in those central areas, and more so your attacking fullbacks will hold down the width when required. But again, you do want the likes of Seydorf to be able to have that option to do so, or potentially stay central. As for the attacking runs, it is also said to mix, so having him get have the ability to make those runs in behind with Inzaghi, yes, or potentially being a bit more physical, having a bit more of a target man approach is also required. So that's why a balanced mix attack does help. As for the interceptions, it is said to aggressive, creating that work rate that Seydorf was well known for, of course, having the ability to also come back on defense, helping cover the likes of Perlo when your two um, midfielders in Perlo and Ambrosini did get forward. So he would also, you know, try and drop a bit deeper as well, trying to get on the ball a bit more effectively in some moments. As for the likes of Kaká, of course, one of the greatest number 10s of all time, he is set to having a support also, just like Seydorf, set to balance. So having the ability to sometimes link up a bit more on that right-hand channel or potentially stay a bit more central and try and create in those central areas of the field. Most importantly though, the attacking runs is set to false nine, so having the ability to drop off the back line, drop into those little half spaces, pockets of space, link up a bit more with Perlo, and try and draw out the opposition and try and create for others. As for the interceptions, of course, just like with Perlo, of course, Kaká was not as bad, but he wasn't best known for his aggressive nature or trying to win the ball back very aggressively. Very much, Ancelotti told him, don't worry about it, we've got the likes of Batuso." will definitely look to try and assist and help you and win that ball back very aggressively and all I need you to do is just stay at the field and when we do have the ball which is more times than not I need you to create and be an artist and have the field as your canvas and try and paint me the best possible picture which again more times than not he was very very good at doing so then finally as for the defensive support I've set him to come back on defense now this is not what you think oh from squad he's not a defensive player this is more so to try and get him to drop into those deeper pockets pick up the ball and then have the ability to drive at the opposition and try and create with the chaos being, you know, created all around him with the side. So more or less, it's not for the defensive lay or the shield or anything like that. It's more so to have a bit of a deeper starting position. And then finally, we've got the likes of Jovic slash Inzaghi, of course, a very hard man to try and replicate his role in this game, I will say. Of course, you do have your, your two number 10s slash your center forwards who were told to try and stay as central as possible. But with Inzaghi, he had the ability and the permission from the likes of Ancelotti to be able to drift into those wider channels if required, or potentially have the ability to stay central and then try and play off the back line. Very quick in his day, attacking crosses, attacking those balls over the top into that forward line of your, your striker, of course. So more so, you want to try and use his pace as much as possible by, by him getting in behind. Aggressive interceptions is said to be on form, like I say, trying to play on the edge of the, the, op the opposition's back line, playing on the shoulder of them. More times not waiting for, for a mistake to happen and then pouncing on that. So you want to try and replicate that work rate. And then finally, the defensive uh, the defensive support, sorry, is set to basic. Now, he would sometimes, you know, drop off that front line and then drop quite deep and win those aerial balls, win the headers and whatnot and try and flick it on and get the likes of Kaká and Seydorf involved in the attacking play as quick as possible. Or potentially having the ability to stay high up the field and then have the likes of Kaká and Seydorf drop a bit deeper, get on the ball and then try and create... For your striker so yes people that is my version of carlo ancelotti's christmas tree 4321 system in the game fc24 out of 10 i would probably give this possibly let me have a quick thing you know what i'm gonna say an eight i was gonna say like a 6.5 because there are some elements to the side where 
it's very hard to try and translate and replicate it in this game. If you watch that that side play, the the mid two thousands, early two thousands AC Milan side with the system, it was very fluid. It was almost effortless at times. It was very you know that like zero mistakes made at all times. They were almost perfect. And it's very hard in this game to try and replicate it. But I will say, when you do have things clicking and ticking over and the, the team is in full flow and the offense is clicking, it looks very, very good. So that's why I would say probably an 8. But again, if it's not looking good, I would probably say it's a 6.5. So I would say it's a solid 8. It is a solid 8, but it's very, very hard to try and replicate that perfect side of the early 2000s. So... Anyway guys, we are going to end off the video right here right now. If you have enjoyed this, like I said earlier, hit that like button down below. And of course, as for always, I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out.